the way the Constitution and the law works is there's something known as a supremacy clause in respect to the supreme law of the land, which is the Constitution. Uh, the supremacy clause is basically that all other laws, federal or state, have to be in accordance with the supremacy clause, with the supreme law of the land, and with any U.S. treaties. So um, this has also been upheld by a uh, Supreme case ruling known as Marbury versus Madison, 1803. Any law repugnant to the U.S. Constitution is null and void. Um, constitutionally, the states have a right to make their own laws, right? Every state is its own sovereign state. So every state has a right to make its own laws so long as those laws don't conflict with the federal law uh, or the supreme law of the land. Uh, same goes for federal laws. They must be in accordance with the supreme law of the land. They must be constitutional. All right. So because that seems to be the case, there are some states that have outlawed bounty hunting. I would find that questionable, and, but until somebody actually goes and tries to set a precedent case with that, um, that's the law. So if you plan on bounty hunting in states where it's illegal, Taylor versus Tainer is not going to cover you. It's not going to protect you. Just move to a state where you can bounty hunt, like California or Nevada. Um, because the law is the law, but every state has its own uh, views on how to interpret the Constitution and because every state has the right to make its own laws um, and there is no federal law for bounty hunting saying that bounty hunting is legal s some states have decided to outright fully ban bounty hunting which is unfortunate but hey you got 46 states where bounty hunting is legal so choose one right California Penal Code 1299 sets the rules and guidelines for bounty hunting and was made state law under the Bail Fugitive Persons Recovery Act. Um, and that is the statutory authority which governs bounty hunting in the state of California. So bounty hunters are not law enforcement or peace officers. PC 1299 does not give you any kind of arrest powers that a citizen does not have. Um, you don't have qualified immunity, which is something that law enforcement and peace officers have because they're sworn peace officers. They have certain uh, standardized training and they are given certain discretionary powers. Bounty hunters don't have any discretionary powers. Thus, you don't have qualified immunity. So uh, if you're a bounty hunter or that's something that you wish to do is, is bounty hunt and go after fugitives as a civilian just know that you have to be very precise and you can't miscalculate um, your actions when bounty hunting because bounty hunters have gone to jail by breaking the law when bounty hunting you, you don't have any qualified immunity. If you have a badge, that doesn't mean anything. Anybody can buy a badge, right? Like you, that, that's not gonna give you any kind of protection. So that's why bounty hunting is so risky, it's so dangerous, and there's so much liability involved. Even if you do it the right way, even if you're very well trained, okay? Even if nobody gets hurt in the process of you bounty hunting, there's a number of things that can go wrong. Uh, and if you don't get criminally charged, expect to be sued civilly that's very possible so you want to definitely be on your best behavior as everyone should okay let's talk about the term officer of the court this is really interesting because again bounty hunters have gone to jail for impersonating peace officers by stating that they're an officer of the court which is a very generic term okay it's a generic term that's used in common law jurisdictions and it's applied to all those who in some degree in the function of their professional or similar qualifications have a part in the legal system. So a uh, officer of the court could be a, a jury member. It could be an attorney. It could be a, a prosecutor, a bail agent, bail company, or their representatives. Anybody and everybody involved in the judicial process becomes an officer of the court. That's a generic term. Don't use that term. Refrain from that term. Don't identify yourself as an officer of the court to anybody. 
Okay, even if you're an officer of the court because you're a bounty hunter remanding a fugitive back into the custody of the courts, you have an interest in that person because you're the bounty hunter that's a representative of the bail company that hired you to whom the fugitive is obliged. Refrain from using officer of the court because you can go to jail for impersonating a peace officer. All right. Uh, bounty hunters are private citizens. Repeat that with me. Bounty hunters are private citizens. Bounty hunters are private citizens. Bounty hunters are not peace officers or law enforcement officers. Okay. Some law enforcement officers or peace officers, whether they're uh, retired or active, do bounty hunt as uh, a side gig, right, for extra money. Some folks do that as a business. People that are law enforcement that do do that as a full-time business as well. That doesn't mean that bounty hunters are law enforcement or peace officers, okay? So just don't confuse the two.